When I asked California Classic Boats owner and ACBS Southern California chapter founding president Al Schinnerer if he'd spend an afternoon with me on Zoom, he was gracious enough to say yes. Then he sent this list of boats and engines he'd owned, and I realized there was some homework to do. Small Southern California builders from the 30s through 50s like Boyce and Mercury, manufacturers listed on his website Chris Craft, Dodge, Garwood, and Hacker, and then Century, Riva, Elko, a Robinson Seagull, a D. White that ran in the Harmsworth Trophy races. Then there were engines from Chris Craft, Scripps, Packard, Kermath, Hispano Suiza, Hall Scott, along with enough Liberty engines to power a small Air Force. Oh, and uh, one of those hackers was first owned by a car manufacturer named Henry Ford. We had a wonderful afternoon. Here are some highlights of our conversation. What got you started? What, what got you thinking, hey, this is, uh, this is something I'm interested in? Well, when I was growing up, 13 years old, my neighbor, next door neighbor, was building and racing 225 Vibros. So I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. So I built myself one, a little three-point hydro, and uh, didn't have enough money to have the right engine, so I had a little four-banger in it. But it would never, never really work. So I, I finished it off after I got out of the service. And uh, that's about six months later, and sold it to somebody else. And he put a B860 in it and uh, set some kind of a record with it. So, anyway, that was my first boat. And then I bought a wooden uh, sailboat off of uh, Lake Arrowhead. And then that kind of all died. I got into restoring cars. And, and then I got uh, divorced and remarried and didn't have much money. And so I thought, hmm, I'd like to have. Maybe we ought to get one of those old Chris Crafts. So I got a hold of a fraternity brother who had a house up at Lake Arrowhead and um, found a uh, racing runabout and had a lot of fun with that. And I thought, well, it was kind of fun. You know, I made it run and it was still kind of usable. I could actually use it when I bought it, but I did some work on it, not a whole lot. So then I found another one. I thought, huh, maybe I should get another one and restore it and sell it for profit. Just you know, just for fun. And then that kind of started the ball rolling. And uh, I started buying boats and I thought, you know, I need parts for these. I'm an engineer. I can figure it out how to do it. So I learned how to do it all, made all, I got like over 600 molds for different parts and things. And and um, then I started buying more boats and putting packages together, making the hardware and Putting, getting the right engine for it and selling those, and that worked out pretty well. Had you been running California Classic Boats for a while before you realized you would, it was worth trying to have a chapter here? Well, or? No, I started California Classic Boats in 1979. Okay. But I've been making parts for my own boats since 1974 or whatever it was. And then while this is all going on, I met, I met Bay Van. Sure. He was trying to get people together do a little informal parade. And so I went up there and joined in and that. Yeah, Faye did a pretty good job of putting that thing together every year. Just getting the airplanes to come in and fly over and buzz the lake, that lasted for a while. And they decided that was probably not too safe. Oh, yeah, and then Faye would arrange the entertainment at the dinner. And one year he had the dancing doggies come in. <laughs> They're dancing on the banquet table. Yeah, yeah, Faye was a different kind of guy. <laughs> Got to thinking we ought to form a chapter of ACPS. And so we did. Jim Thorpe was one of the original members. Uh, chapter officers elected to serve during 1985 were Al Schinnerer, Ken Jewett, Barb Peckham, Kathy Thorpe, Brett Schinnerer, and Hal Orchard. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like the right crew. There it is, yep. Yeah, petition the national and showed him we had enough boats to do something mm -hmm. and that got us started I guess. Or do you scour the newspapers for ads? How do you like how do you Oh no, well no I had friends all over the place and you know, after starting making parts and stuff so I'm talking to people to see. I just check locally but most of them well let me think 28 foot dodge it was sitting down on blocks down at uh 
in Balboa Island at the right by the ferry there, the Hill family had a uh, boat service. They used to run it to uh, Catalina, I guess. But then I needed an engine, which was a big uh, uh, 1,400 cubic inch V12. I scrounged that up from somewhere. I forget where I found that. You know, things just kind of developed. <laughs> A lot of those are boats that then you saved because I've, I've heard stories of, you know, the olden days at Lake Arrowhead when old wooden boats fell into disfavor and disrepair. They just throw them on the other side of the dam and, and burn them. When I bought my second uh, racing runabout, I went up. That's where I got it. Had them all lined up in rows burning them at the marina, <laughs> just in the parking lot or whatever. And now I need engines. So I started talking to uh, Gordon Harper. And he says, yeah, there's some guy here in Lomita has got some four marine conversions or something like that. And so I found those and bought them all. And <laughs> moving all this stuff around. It's, they're pretty big engines. They're, they're 1,500 cubic inch V12s. So then I made a connection with a guy in, that rented the wind machines and generators to the movie studios. And uh, he had a whole bunch of them, and then he died, and I, I bought some of them from him directly and some from his widow, so I bought like nine or eight more from him. Oh. I had a warehouse out in uh, Mecula. It's an old chicken farming place where the lights would go red at certain times of day and fake the chickens and the land at the right time and all that. So I had all these boats stuffed in there. I still have a map I got. had them in there. It was really pretty tricky, but it's a big building. I think it's like 150 feet long. So sure getting all the stuff out there because these are all kind of decrepit boats on decrepit trailers and towing them down the 90 freeway got a little exciting sometimes. Two of my boats went to the Lake Arrowhead restaurant for uh, decor. Uh, yes. They cut, the, uh, they cut the sterns off and or sliced them side and end to end at one case and cut the stern off on the other and made a booth out of it. I, I've eaten out. in those booths. Oh, okay. And then one, one, something else went to a shoe store in, in uh, Catalina in Avalon. They did the same thing. They made a booth out of it for customers. <laughs> and another boat I had uh, ended up on the USS Potomac. I've yeah, the Potomac that. had uh, Chris Crafts on them for, uh, I don't know, lifeboats or whatever. It's supposedly usable on davits. They could drop it overboard. It was a, uh, started out as a sportsman, but it was supposed to be a runabout, so I just made a runabout out of it for the donation. And, you know, put, all, put the right hardware on it and all that. There were two of them, so Marty Folletto had one, and he did his the same way. And... Uh, they both went to the Potomac. For Robinson Seagull. Oh yeah, yeah. Had a ship to Tahoe in time for the Tahoe boat show. And it, and when I was delivered, I had it delivered to Old Dexter's Marina and parked it in the yard there hoping I could find somebody that would be interested in buying it and doing it. Because, you know, it's a pretty impressive boat. Oh, very much so. Still had the original toilet in it. And some of the hard work. So, so anyway, Clay Thompson saw it up there, and he later bought it from me, and then he, he restored it all. Gorgeous boat. Did you ever get that one out on the water, or was that uh, was that another we're, we're saving? Oh, that was another hulk. Another hulk. I, I you know Glory Peel, don't you? Yes, I do. do you? She towed it to uh, to the Reno Airport storage area, and as she's going down the road. <laughs> Planks are falling off the bottom. <laughs> I found some pictures. Let me see if I can do a little quick share here and, and show you some of the stuff that uh, that I've found. So here's one that's done. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the boat that I had and sold to Clay Thompson. So this is this is Flying Cloud. That's the one yeah. that you wow, that's the one that you had. Well, she's beautiful now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't look anything like that. Yeah, he did a perfectly beautiful job. I, I found some information on Miss D. White, too, including some old newspaper articles on when she ran in the 1930 in the, in the, the trophy race. I had Miss D. White, too, which was a 35-foot race boat. 
Flynn Liberty engines. I was talking to somebody and they said, oh yeah, there's a big old round kind of boat here, out here in the valley. So he told me where it was. So I went and looked, I said, whoa, that looks pretty interesting. And I figured out what it was. And, you know, it had been running the uh, Harmsworth World Trophy? Record class. It, never, it only did about 72 miles an hour. So there wasn't anything that special. Two great big liberties in there. That's, that's a lot of boat. And I made all the hard work. That was all part of the package. Interesting story on the instruments. I was missing them. Somebody said I some instruments uh, in a, a restaurant or bar in uh, Marie Callender's in wherever it was. And so I went down and looked, and sure enough, those were the, all the instruments out of Miss New White, too. Oh, man. And it was on some kind of plaque with it says, for instruments from former world record holder. Maybe it was the whole dash. I don't know. But anyway, I had to do some orchestrating with uh, whoever managed the calendar, made it some other stuff for him. And he was happy and I was happy. So when I found it, the boat tail was cut off. The last three feet were cut off. And that had it been converted into a fishing boat. I have pictures of it with a cabin on it. I said, ugly stuff. You know, I, I had a uh, 21 foot cobra that I did. Yeah, somebody said, yeah, there's a cobra down on Long Beach Marina. It's about half sunk. And, and I said, well, I better go look at that. Somehow I managed to figure out who owned it. And he was had a condo there somewhere. And I, he would never answer the doors. All the all, whole thing was really weird. I finally got to talk to him. And, uh, you know, I made him an offer. And I finally bought it. And, it had an MBL in it, which wasn't too exciting. So I found a uh, Cadillac Crusader out of a, a sport picture. So it had all the right high performance equipment on it and everything. Put that in it. And I restored that boat in my garage. I took it up to Tahoe and showed it and rolled across uh, John Mozart's waterfront property a couple of times. And we finally made a connection and he made me an offer and I sold it to him. Cobras are just a cobras are just a thing. I mean, I'm. It, it, yeah, they're a useless boat, really. <laughs> they carry one other person. You look good and go fast, but so what? You want to have some fun with people and enjoy. That's a good thing about a triple. You carry a lot of people. <laughs> Miss Harrow has a pretty unique boat. It's one of two delivered to that design, and it had a. A120, a race engine, was 846 cubic inch flathead V8. And there are only three engines in existence like that. And I found that one. Uh, I was down at Harper's Marine one time, and there it was on blocks. And they were doing some engine work on it. It had, uh, and I thought, wow, that's a monster boat. And uh, they were, it had a Chrysler small, a 331 Hemi in it. Was it one of the ride boats? Yeah. I, I suspect there have been more than one Miss Arrowhead boats. I've, this I've, mine got renamed to Step In Again 4. That all the boats at Big Bear were called Step In Again 1, 2, 3, and mine was number 4. I have pictures of it when it was Step In Again 4, but I just liked Arrow, Arrowhead better. I rode in the, I think, the 1938 boat you're talking about. I rode in that when I was a kid. That kind of impressed me. <laughs> was, wow, this is pretty cool. Of course, rode at the back of the aft cockpit, which was the most fun, the most exciting. I remember when I first got Miss Hera head done and just kind of quick and dirty and taking it out and sitting in the back of some, somebody else was driving and the whole hull whole, whole would just twist. We went across ways and I thought, that's probably not very good. Well, I started extensive. That was in 1990, I think, when I first got it running. So then I started all over, complete redo. Took it up to Tony Brown and had him do a whole bunch. Well, Paul Mayhew first, and then Tony Brown. Had a lot of work done on it, but it ended up being a really good boat. And, you know, I decided to sell it to an auction that Dana Meekin was running up at Monterey, concurrent with the car auctions up there that he was, and he was starting to list boats. If you can get out of them for, for less than you... Get. Yeah. No, I didn't get any sweat equity out of it. I just got my costs. Yeah. But that was okay. I had so much fun with that boat. That's what it's all about. That's the important part. That really That's right. That's right. Ford tank engines. 
Oh, that's a really interesting old engine. Oh, it's a, a great big, uh, yeah, 1100 cubic inch V8 with uh, overhead cams. Beautiful design. What was I going to do with that? And that was another possibility for the 33 foot Garwood. History on that one was it was delivered as a target boat. So I thought, huh, that's kind of strange that they would build a new boat just for that. So I went through all the specs for the uh, 33 and a half foot Garwood runabout for 1939. And sure enough, it's identical. So they used that hull and got rid of the rounded nose and the rounded uh, transom back. So I thought maybe it ought to be put back into a runabout. So I found a Kermass Sea Raider V12, 500 horsepower. Well, Marty Folletto had one too. So we sold them both to Jim Grundy, both with Sea Raider V12s. He had one restored as a runabout, a 1939 runabout, 33 and a half foot. The other one restored as a national target boat. They, they towed targets. The military would shoot at them or drop bombs on them, whatever they did. Like they did when I was on the destroyer, we towed a, a sled and they dive bombed the thing off the East Coast back during World War II. We're all hoping we'd get hit on the fantails. So. So we get some yard diamonds and liberty that didn't happen. <laughs> and I do just need to say, take a second to say thank you for your service. I'm sure there are a lot of exciting stories from uh, from those days. <laughs> oh yeah, three years during World War II. Well, we were, I was on a destroyer in the Atlantic for a while, working with uh, baby flat ops, uh, training pilots to land. So that was kind of interesting. And they'd crash and we'd have to stop and the carrier would keep going, of course. And we'd put a boat over the guy out if he got out of the plane and uh, then uh, that I'd been assigned for a troop ship in Wilmington actually to uh, we we're going to go and invade Japan so they dropped a bomb and so that ended that uh, but we went anyhow to troops and occupy uh, the Philippines and Japan I was in Nagasaki five months after they dropped the bomb walked through the ruins <laughs> it was pretty pretty interesting to say the least um, anyway, that's that's my military career. Well, Al, uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, oh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>